Hallelujah. Luke, sorry, chapter 5, that's it, verse 17. Refreshing. Refreshing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Chapter 5, verse 17 says, And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and of Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present. Hallelujah. Say it. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Go now to Luke chapter 4. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to give you some, some verses that you need to go through to see where the pre what happened. Remember we talked a, a week or two ago about how when Jesus came out of the wilderness, first of all, when he went into, the word of God says that he was full of the Holy Ghost. After he went through his uh, tempting and testing period, the word of God then said again um, that he was not only full of the Holy Ghost, but he was full of the Holy Ghost and power. Amen. And then later down in, I think it is verse 32 of chapter 4, it says that he was not only full of the Holy Ghost and power, but that his word was with power. Amen. Full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Holy Ghost and power, and his word was was with power. Now I want you to take note of the very first thing that happened after Jesus came out of the wilderness. The very first thing that happened in uh, verse number 33. Let's go there quickly. Because we were talking about power and authority. Dunamis and exousia. Supernatural ability and authorization. Not just having ability but you're authorized to do what it is that God is giving you power to do. Amen? You know, um, we have a lawyer in our midst. Um, there is a power of attorney. Okay? You could uh, be in the will and everything could be there. But if they don't have a statement that Alvin has been given power of attorney, you can't do nothing. I mean, that person can have buildings, businesses, cars, stocks, bonds treasures locked up somewhere in some far off country but if they did not have that clause there that you were given power of attorney you have some stuff and you can't access it you can't do nothing about it but God says I'm not just giving you ability but I'm authorizing you in this season okay verse 33 of, of chapter um, 4 the first thing that happened when Jesus came out of the wilderness, the very first thing, now in the synagogue, in other words, now in the temple, now in GWC, God come in the church. There you go, brother. <laughs> God ain't dealing with the world first. He's coming right up in here where we're at to deal with the church. So his first assignment after he was filled with the spirit, filled with power, his word had power. His very first assignment was right up in the synagogue. And what does it say? Say, now in the synagogue, there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice. Jesus had to address some stuff. Where the power of the Lord is present, demons cannot, cannot stay lodged in the lives of people. Why? Because the power of the Lord is present. Hallelujah. Especially if those persons are, are yielded to the spirit of the Lord. There's no way that you can sit in a place where the power of the Lord is present and still be in bondage. You have to make up in your mind that I... You keep yourself in bondage because you make a decision, I don't want to be set free. But if you have a desire and a heart to say, I want to walk in the fullness of God. I want to do everything that God has called me to do. You got that desire. When the power of the Lord is present, deliverance has to come. All right. We go in quickly. So I want you to write this stuff down. The first thing was that people in the church were delivered. Verse 33. Verse 38. It says that fevers. There was a woman with a fever. Irreg irregularities in physical bodies will be regulated. That's verse 38. These are things that happen when the power of the Lord is present. Verse 40, sickness and disease was addressed. My God, 
got to go in the name of Jesus. That's verse 40. Chapter 5, verse 1 through 9, it says that miracles of obedience took place. Why? Because the power of the Lord was present. The men went out, they toiled all night, but because they were obedient, hallelujah, when he said, put your, your net over onto the other side, according to my, uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 1 through 9, supernatural miracles start to take place, just like the $50 obedience offering, hallelujah. Supernatural miracles will begin to take place. Why? Because the power of the Lord is present. Verse 10 through 11, people will submit to the call of God. When the power of the Lord is present, the disciples left their nets. And they said, when Jesus said, come follow me, no longer will you uh, be fishermen, but you will be fishers of men. The power of the Lord was present. So they left their nets. In other words, um, I have a big establishment, a big business. But when the power of the Lord is present and says, come go with me, my God, come follow me. You got to drop everything and say, yes, Lord, I'm going to follow you. The power of the Lord is present. Then you have verse 12, leprosy is healed. And we know that there are a lot of people who have spiritual leprosy. One thing with the disease of leprosy, you can see it on the outside when a person is affected by it. There are many diseases. People could be sitting up in your churches all day. You don't see the outward physical manifestation of their sickness. But with leprosy, there's an outward manifestation. Hallelujah. And so a lot of times in the natural and the spiritual, people have outward manifestations that cause you to know that something is wrong. But when the power of the Lord is present, hallelujah, deliverance got to come. Verse 18, paralyzed, there was a paralyzed man. People will begin to get strategies. We can't get him through the crowd, let's put him down through the roof, my God. <laughs> you can't get to Jesus one way, because when the power is present, the only thing you're saying in your heart and in your mind is, I got to touch the hem of his garment. I got to leave different than the way I came in here today. The power of the Lord is present. So the man was paralyzed. They put him down through the roof. The brothers say, come on. We got to get him to Jesus. Power is present. See, because when power is present, you start to do some unusual stuff. The regular natural stuff don't do no more. So what? It's like a whatever it takes anointing comes upon you when the power of God is present. Verse number 20. When the power of God is present, faith begins to rise. If you look at verse number 20, you'll see that the faith of the people. Power is present. People who never believed before. Man, hey, I remember um, days ago, we would have people standing up to the altar. When healing started to take place, they looking like, okay, I ready to jump any second because this person getting ready to get up out of this wheelchair. And when they get up out of this wheelchair, I'm going to run with them. Faith rises when the power of God is present. Verse number 24. Sins are forgiven. We cannot stay in the place and God's power is present. And don't give people an opportunity to come forward and serve this God. Sins are forgiven. The sins of the people were forgiven. And then number 10, verse 26, it says that a reverential fear. Let's end with that. Verse 26 in chapter 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. Luke chapter 5, verse 26. An overwhelming astonishment and ecstasy seized them all. And they recognized and praised and thanked God. And they were filled with or controlled by reverential fear. And kept saying, we have seen wonderful and strange and incredible and unthinkable things today. When the power of God is present, an unbeliever will come in. People who don't have faith. People who don't, you know, I don't believe in that stuff. Ah, that's not for today. Ah, they're skeptics, you know. But when the power, the authentic power of God is present in an environment and present in the life of persons that they come into contact with, they cannot deny it. All of a sudden, a reverential fear and an awe for God, hallelujah, will return back into the hearts of the people. So I want to encourage you as you go today, 
Go through those scriptures and just start to decree and declare, the power of the Lord is upon me. <laughs> ah, the power of God is present in my life. Hallelujah. Not just when I'm in the four walls of the church, but as I go out on my job, as I go into my business, as I go into my home, as I drive along the streets, all of y'all who drive in here in the Western District, hallelujah, decree and declare, the power of the Lord is upon me that I'm about to touch where it is that Global Worship Center needs to be amen you got to start to speak it over yourself come on stand to your feet and begin to decree and declare it over your life today the power of the Lord is present yes Lord hallelujah in my life the power of the Lord is present in my life begin to prophesy over yourself the power of the Lord if you've never experienced it hallelujah the word of God says when the Holy Ghost came upon them they were all filled with power hallelujah Hallelujah. If you need power today and you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you need power today and you've not dedicated your life to the Lord Jesus, these altars are open for you to come. Hallelujah. So you can begin to experience the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Begin to say it and declare it. Sing it out. Oh, the power of the Lord is present in my life. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Oh, thank you, Lord, for the next few minutes. The power of the Lord. The power of the Lord that will heal diseases. Hallelujah. The power of the Lord that will speak to sicknesses. Hallelujah. The power of the Lord that will cause life to come into the legs of a paralyzed man. The power of the Lord, hallelujah, that will rebuke leprosy and AIDS, hallelujah, internal diseases, external diseases. The power of the Lord um, is present in my life today, hallelujah. So if you need to recommit yourself, um, you just need to come for a few seconds. Um, it's just as simple as that. Um, begin to say the power of the Lord, hallelujah. I'm getting a re-injection of the power of the Lord. Oh, the power of the Lord. Oh, the power, the power, the power of the Lord. Oh, the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, the power of the Lord. Power of the Lord. Yeah. The power of the Lord. Yeah, Shabbat. Yeah. His authority, his supernatural ability. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. The power. Power of the Lord is present in my life for change and transformation to take place. The power of the Lord. Come, Alexis. The power of the Lord. Oh, yes, it is. Power, power of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, oh God. Oh, hallelujah. Just begin to prophesy it and speak it over you. The power of God is present in your life today. Oh, hallelujah, to bring you through every situation, to lift you up, hallelujah, from disappointment. The power of the Lord, yeah, I worship you, God. Thank you for your power that is present in my life. I'm more than a conqueror because the power of the Lord is present. I'm more than a conqueror. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for outpouring your power.